Hello everybody, I am Angry Bird, back with a new Steel Division 2 cast today and we're carrying on the best of three series between Gaspar and Jack. This is the Steel Division 2 League Season 2 Division 2 Playoff Semi-Finals. What a fantastic game I'm sure we've got in store for you. If you didn't watch the first game between these two players, make sure you go back and watch this now. Do not miss that first game, I cannot guarantee you. Things won't get spoiled from this point onwards. So press pause, go back, watch that first game. So the matchup today, Gaspar on the left-hand side in blue. He is playing the 78 Sturm, and we saw this in the other semi-final. Uh, both players must have forgotten to ban the 78 Sturm, or maybe Jack didn't worry about it. Who knows? Um, but Jack, he's on the right-hand side. He's playing uh, Grupa Churina. Um, Gaspar on the left in balanced income, Jack on the right on flatline income. Let's have a look at the two decks. So Gaspar playing the 78 Sturm on balanced income. This time we do have some aircraft, the Ju-188 in B and the Ju-188 in C. There's nine in total, quite a lot of aircraft and they could come into play. In terms of infantry, a total of 103 infantry units, but remember that infantry, very, very strong. Uh, Sturmschutzen, excellent infantry units. Begleit Pioneers, probably the best infantry unit in the game. May have been overtaken lately, but I still think it's... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of, if not the best infantry units in the game. Stugs will command the tank scene. Up against Group Chirina, I think they'll be up against mostly T-34s and obviously the airplanes doing the... A lot of the heavy lifting on the anti-tank front. Uh, to hold back those aircraft, well, we have the Flak 43s. And again, we saw in the previous game how strong, or the previous semi-final, how strong the Flak 43s are. We'll have to keep our eyes on those, although Gaspar... Didn't really use any, uh, I think I'm, yeah, he didn't really use much AA in the previous game against Jack. So we will be interesting to see, you know, how they, how it all comes about. So moving over to the right hand side, we have Jack. He's playing the group of Chirina on flatline income. Lots of snipers. First things first, lots of snipers. And in this kind of territory, I think they can be decent. They're pretty much always guaranteed like a thousand meter range. There's so many little pockets of forest and things. There's so many places to hide those snipers that can give you that thousand meter range. On other maps where there's much further distances, sometimes the snipers can get caught out a little bit. But here I think they're going to excel. Um, infantry wise, 113 units. So a similar number of units, but the infantry not quite as good. Tanko de Saniki, very strong in heavy forest. After Machiki, very strong in heavy forest. Uh, but the rest of them, they, they're probably weaker than the German equivalents. But still, you know, not, not terrible infantry. Not terrible infantry. Tank wise, some M5s to start us off. And then it's T34, 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 and T34. A lot of T34s as well. I mean, 58 tanks in total, 50 T34s. Probably double the number of stugs. So unless Sahan, um, dear me, unless Gaspar deals with those T34s, he could be in trouble, and he's going to have to use his AA. I, I did see a Pack 43 AA card in there. That's too, you know, bit of overkill. He doesn't need that. He's only up against T34, so they could roam rampant. This time, Jack's side, anti-air, only 3 Xenot 37 mils. I guess he's going to rely on the Yak 9s. He's probably assuming that his opponent won't take much, much air. But those 3 Xenot 87 mils could be too little. Lots of supply cards, so I imagine it's going to be... Fairly similar with the mortar strategies, a phase A card of supply trucks and a phase B card. So I imagine lots of mortar use in this game from Jack. In terms of the aircraft, only two P3 anti-tank rocket planes. So he does have a lot of AT guns though, and there's lots of places to hide AT guns on this map. So I think he is going to be able to deal with the Stugs well. I think his T-34s will be able to roam free. Um, 
but the infantry yeah i think definitely gaspar has the infantry advantage so it's going to be interesting how this game plays out so here we are we're underway on the left hand side in blue is gaspar playing the 78 sturm on balanced income with a pretty balanced start as you'd expect jack on the right hand side in red he's playing group Torino on flatline income with a looks like a, a looks like a push up north to be fair i think that's where most of his units are going the only michiki has unloaded um but there is a pantabushi 41 in there the infantry looks to have made it through okay from jack it's going to be an interesting matchup i think one of the key things is will the pantabushi be able to take out that m5 or will it go down down into the south we see a bit of a push from jack looking to jump into this compound the flammenwerfer should deal with them building to build and it's just going to force them out but um whether they can deal with them long term is the question we do have a panzer Vinictons trying to make a flanking maneuver from gasper we'll have to keep our eyes on that throughout this game reminds me of a very much of a war game sneaky beaky special forces behind enemy lines kind of push and um, you in war game you used to get the helicopters come around the side drop off your uh, sneaky units but in steel division 2 they pretty much have to hoof it on foot but those panzer vinictons could get into a nice position if they you know from here they can stop moving down southwards we'll have to keep our eyes on that Ooh, looks like one of the m5s does go down to a panzer boucher hidden and the other one straight after it those pantabuches can be really good up in the north no big engagement between the tanks and the at gun and it looks like jack has started to push forwards on the northernmost part of this map the m5 now starts to push forwards will the pantabuche be discovered i think it's going to get discovered by this tanko de saniki and that's really going to help jack out at the top part of this map but those Tanko Desanikis have stopped where they are. In come the mortars into the centre field. How big a role will they play? And Gaspar looks as if he's pushed forwards in this central area. He has the Begleit Pioneers here. They can just decimate whatever's in their way. 9 MP44s, 3 G43s and an MG42. Fantastic unit, although not in line of sight to take on the Sapery right now. It looks like we've got some mortars from Gasper in play this time. And Jack has made a flanking maneuver around onto the Urzatstruppen. Both the Flammenwerfers have gone down in the south and he's pushing forwards. He really doesn't like using the buildings. Jack definitely does not like using the buildings. I say that, I just go over the stroke and he's hopping it in the building. <laughs> so the Panzer Benictons looks like it's moving further northwards. Will it make it or will it get spotted at some point? Stuck 3G into the south. Up in the north, Jack looks to be taking full control but the Panzer Buchs say has managed to retreat and will be a threat to the advancing m5 in the center ground it looks like jack has more infantry right now but Gaspar has taken this central hill and this can be pretty key. The Schutzen could do in moving forward take down that half trap but I guess Gaspar may not know what is there. More half traps come in, Tanko Disaniki and Sapere. Will Jack be able to recover that position? Pack 40 in the centre covering this central supply road. Does take a shot at the strokey DP. Does have the APCR turned on which he doesn't need to do it's more advantageous to turn that off 
only use the APCR shells when you have to penetrate a target and you can't do it with AP. It does get an armor crack on the M5 though, which will get the kill. Jack pushing forwards into the back line, despite there being a stuck 3G here. No major infantry though to hold up the push of the Ognamachiki and Strelki. There is some reinforcing infantry coming in now, but Jack will spot that. Although the Stug should spot the M5 as well. Oh, the M2A1 stops to engage. Because it has that 50 cal, it will engage armor. But you really don't want it to. I think if that had continued, it would have put itself behind the house. Bit of a shame from Jack's perspective. Oh, the Ogmachiki catch the Panzer Boucher. Do get a kill there. And will they also get a kill against the Schutzenfuhrer? Force him out the building. Oh, but they are going to hop straight into the same building. And they will go down. 14-10 to Jack right now. I think this northern side, he's picked up two flags. He's also picked up a... Well... It's either this flag here or the northmost flag. One of those is blue at the start of this game. Gasp oh no, it might be both actually, because Gaspar has picked up this gap flag on the central hill. The mortars are now into play, starting to rain fire down on these units, and it's going to be important to have plenty of mortars in action, because when you are engaging superior infantry, any support weaponry you can bring to bear will certainly help you out in the infantry engagement. I mean, these Schutzen may well be defeated fairly easily because they're highly stressed by the mortar fire already. And they should get suppressed and then surrendered. That's how you deal with superior infantry. Jack has lost this northernmost flag though by pushing his troops all the way forward. Uh, he does have some strokey moving in. These actually might go down to the Stug 3G. Yep, they do. There is a T-3476 up here as well. I think I favor the Stug in this engagement. Yeah, I definitely do. And whether he's going to throw some smoke in? No, he's going to throw in HE shells into that northern town. Oh, the Panzervenicton's behind enemy lines. It took a shot at something. Down to one man. That is a six-man squad to start with, so something has been firing at that unit. Obviously, there's a, a unit of Strokey DB here trying to locate that Panzervenicton behind enemy lines, but it's definitely taking shots at something. Something's gone down here a lot. A jeep. I think Jack's given up on that hunt for now. And the Panzervenictons will survive to live another day. Maybe get one more Panzershrek shot in. They have nine shots, but I think they'll only get one more because there's only one man left. We'll try and keep our eye on that. So Jack has pushed forwards in the center. There's a Panzerbuchi 41 that would be in a great position to take out that M5. But unfortunately in the moment, it is not. has lost this compound again similar to the north because he's pushed his infantry so far forward that he's lost his compound behind let's try and push Sapri back in but the glide pioneers they still have satchel chargers uh, they still have the frag grenades so my money's on the the glide pioneers at this stage Mortar fire coming in, but a little bit too far back. And those Sapri are going to get taken out. There we go. 
do take a number of men out of that big like pioneer squad though the panzer Bushi, i think crew panics the m5 does reveal itself the sapery start taking shots at it but the stug 3g should also start to get involved the panzer Bushi does go down though and the flat billing still here sorry the flat billing the Vinictungs is still here behind enemy lines in comes a double p3 strike against that stug have they lost sight of the target they might have done I think lost enough sight to ensure that Stug was going to be okay. The M5 does push forward once again, though. T3476 heading down the road. Will that Panzer Bucci get sight on it? I think it's going to turn off in time. Jack's infantry down here has been defeated. He has got 13-11. He's lost these two flags. Barely. And Gaspar could recover this situation. I mean, if he did a desperate flanking maneuver into that compound, he'd actually surround most of these units here. Mortars look to be engaging down into the south. Look at Jack's control of this forest. And I think Gaspar's maybe trying, tr struggling to afford reinforcements. A lot of his infantry is rather expensive. We are into B phase now though, so that should help him out because he's now got 140 points a minute. And Sturmschutzen do go up into that northern side. They can deal a lot of damage with those MP44s. They are supported by a Stug 3G up there. Gaspar definitely has the... With these extra three infantry units, Gaspar definitely has the units to date take back control of the north oh shoot a kill onto the m5 from the panzer 41 will it get the kill the stug finishes it off smoke coming into the compound trying to protect from pack 40 fire although the after machiki Oh, look at that. It's pushed out into the open. Jack did just spot that in time and unload them. But wow, that could have been really unfortunate. That pack 40 is actually out of HE shells. Let's have a look down into the south. The Panzer Vinicton's still in play, but it's very rare that a unit actually spawns from this road. I mean, usually it spawns from this road here. And if it does come up to the north, it will spawn and come along this top road over the bridge or as these units are kind of come up here and along so that finnick tongues is not fantastically positioned you know it'd be better to have it on this corner here you know in this house but uh, maybe gaspar is gonna move it a little bit later on So we push up to the north. I think a T-34 went down there to the Stug. Ooh, but that goes down to the Zis-2 in reply. Now, the infantry, we did say we thought this would be enough. But I think the mortars are... Wow, two big surrenders there. I think they were both Sturmschutzen. I mean, they are 40 point surrenders. 80 points lost. Oof, that is a big deal. And I think the mortars are really coming into play here. The pioneers do unload in time. Another storm shoots them coming into the center. Oh, is that? Oh, and they do go down in the transport. That's 40 points lost in the transport. And the shoots and Fiora should definitely go down as well. Just one man will not survive against Jack's units pushing forwards. Ooh, look. just caught the tail end of an airstrike onto the stug jack does pick up the kill here his infantry have managed to get into the buildings uh, pioneers are pinned down but the glide grenadiers are still alive and the storm shoots and push forwards i think jack is going to lose his units here and it's going to push the front line forwards potentially in this southern side gaspar could make a move Oh, 
Oh, these Beglite Grenadiers and Schutzen are down in men. Will they survive? Yes, they will against the Aftermachiki. Two more squads of Strelke moving up, though. It could be enough to turn the tide in this central area, but we do have a unit of Pioneers coming in to replace them. Oh, so... Wow, look at this. Panzer and Ictums. Again, behind enemy lines. If that moves forwards, it will easily take out the M42. And this central area is so open right now for Gaspar to take. I think he's so concerned with this top side that this center, Jack is getting away with right now. I also think the mortifier is just really key for him. Stug is pushing forwards. Has the Panzer spotted? They're holding fire with the G43s. I think this may be a bug where they're on efficient shot, so they won't engage with those G43s, despite the fact that they can see the M42 gun. Bit of a shame. Bit of a shame. Oh, and Jack will beat those Flammenwerfers and at least get a foothold on top of this hill. With nothing behind Gasper as well, he could be in trouble here. An RG18 does make its way up. The Panzerminichtungs has moved into position down on the south. So we may see a kill or possibly two from them. Ooh, Jack is just firing infantry at this hill from all sides. And it looks like Gaspar is now starting to falter. And I think he will need to retreat fully from that position. His units, I think, are going to go down to the onslaught of Stroke DPs, followed up by that one after Machiki squad. After Machiki's push forward with Strokes in the center, and they are going to clear up some units here as well. Ooh, a double kill in that center area. And a kill further north. I didn't see what went down, but I think an infantry unit did go down to those Bagaic Grenadiers. So Gaspar does take control of this central flag. Jack has the 1410. The north is pretty pretty sewn up for him i'm surprised he's not moving that zis 2 gun further forwards there is a unit of baglight grenadiers here but you know i know it's out in the open but this kind of position could fire on reinforcements seeing whether there's another position i think this would be too far forwards but yeah i think he could reposition that zis 2 gun So I think Gaspar is, well, he's 15-9 down. There's seven minutes left on the clock. Oh, double P3 strike. Oh, will this get a two for one? No, I, they obviously couldn't see that stug as it drove away back over the bridge. And that flat 43 definitely not doing so well as we saw in the Sahandor game. I think it's hurt by the line of sight of this forest right in front of it, so it's not opening fire soon enough. If he did reposition out into maybe this kind of spot, I think that would have opened fire earlier. So I think... I, I was going to say earlier that I think Gaspar is maybe starting to come back into it. He doesn't have long. He's got 12 minutes left on the clock with Jack at a 14-10, although this flag could go down any minute. But I feel like the income advantage is starting to mean he can afford a lot more of those more expensive units without jeopardizing, you know, the number of forces he's got on the field. In comes another flag 43. Will he be able to turn the tide? I think in the center area, he has pushed forwards, but he's met with a lot of infantry units in reply. I don't know. I don't know. Is that Studebaker out? Yeah, it's out of supplies.
Gaspar does look to be starting to control this southern flag. Southern flag? Northern flag. Wow. <laughs> Oh, it looks like these Beglight Grenadiers are going to get taken out by this M2A1. That will hurt Gaspar. Atom Cheeky pushing forward into the shoot something as well. Wow, surrounding the unit in the compound, picking up the kill. I think this, let's have a look at this northern engagement. Yeah, you see, there we go. The Flak 43 opens fire much earlier than it did in the south. Unfortunately, not early enough to stop the rocket attack. Um, but at least, you know, added some inaccuracy due to the suppression. I think down in the south, it was, this one here is too close to this forest. Probably the same with this one, although it might be okay. Ooh, look at the centaur. I didn't notice this. But Jack's units have been taken out and his other central position looks fairly weak. P3 coming in here. Will launch against the Stug. Doesn't pick up the kill. After Machiki and Strolki, but they're down to three men and two men apiece. That Panzer and Inktons look like it has been doing some work. Down in the south, it has been taken out. Although has taken a T-34-76 and a unit of infantry, it looks like. It may have been this infantry here that, that we're in that transport, but that Panzer Inictums definitely has delayed Jack on this southern side. It's a shame Gaspar doesn't have any infantry here. I think if he targeted this spot, he would be able to take back some momentum. Jack still has the 1410 right now. The AA a little bit too far back. I'd like it to be pushing up. Gaspar's on the attack here. He needs his AA close to his units. He needs to give that an attack move order, at least to, you know, to come, come up behind his units. Keep it as close as possible. Jack looks like he may be on the retreat here. This northern side could collapse. I mean, he has one Tanko de Saniki. There's two men, sorry. Two Tanko de Sanikis holding this flag. Again, he's smoking off that pack 40. We have a supply truck coming to refill the pack 40, though. He's only got eight AP shells off. Wow, that thing has fired six APCR shells. It fired 10 HE shells and 15 AP shells by my reckoning. That's a lot of ammunition put down from that one pack 40. Rather than smoke it off, surely Jack would be better off just mortar in the position he must not have an exact fix on where that is so Jack still has a 1410 here though he's slowly burning down the clock I think he's trying to hang on at this point because Gaspar is unbalanced so the income starts to favor Gaspar from around about 25 minutes Jack, I think he's just trying to hold on for the next six minutes. You have to Machiki push forward into the central forest once again. And Gaspar retreating his Beglite Grenadier. I think it's a mistake to retreat it all the way back here. I think he's looking for range. He's looking for range. He doesn't want to square off against an Avta Machiki like at 100 meter distance. Strike down into the set, uh, south, does take out the Mordor and the IG. Nice strike. And again, oh, there is a Flak 41 in here though. We miss those. I mean, this Flak 43 should really be somewhere up here on this hill or further forwards because Gaspar has this flag here right now. 
I mean, you could even be very aggressive and try and put it here, but you need to make sure that this is fully reinforced. I think that would be a mistake. But certainly, he needs to move it further up. And this one down here as well, that needs to move further up. Striking to the north, Stug goes down. Again, look how far back this Fat 43 is. There is a JU-188 coming in. I think this is the first aircraft from Gaspar. And actually, that might do some decent damage. The unit did go down before the bombs did. But the T-3476 walked straight into the, the bombs of that JU-188 and is falling back as a result. Again, I think Jack has taken advantage of the lack of counter battery. So, mortars, it recently changed, and mortars cannot be automatically counter batteried by, you know, your artillery. And I think some of the top players have obviously gotten used to the counter battery order. And now that's no longer in play, they, they, they aren't counter battering mortars. And. That's allowing Jack to do a lot of work. I don't think he's been as aggressive with his mortars as he was in the previous game. Otherwise, we'd have seen maybe a pair down here as well. But Gaspar is desperately trying to move forwards. He's 14-10 down. There's three minutes left on the clock. He has lost this center hill. But there are flags he can capture. He's captured the north. There are reinforcements coming in from Jack. That Tanko de Saniki is still there in that... In that position. I mean, the Marder could easily take that down, but I guess... He cannot spot that unit. The T-3476 is a presence in the area. Has to allocate something to move into that position, surely. But like Grenadiers are way behind enemy lines. I don't know whether that was a mistake where they were unloaded earlier. Oh, it looks like he is now pushing on this center compound. He can easily pick this up with the two strokey that are there. Uh, oh, another stud goes down to the PE3. Those PE3s have been doing a fantastic job for Jack. There is another Panzer Vinnington's on the south side. Gaspar's going for his... Going for his sneaky flanking manoeuvre once again. I don't actually think he's got enough time as it stands. Two minutes left on the clock. And Jack's got a lot of infantry down here. He may well push onto this flag. But look, the centre is open. If Gaspar pushes forwards, the centre is open. He can at least pick up the flag here. Those Tanko de Sanikis are somehow still alive. The Marder's moving forwards. What kind of AP penetration? 145 mils, yeah, it is enough. That's fine. Oh, it looks like the Begleitgrens are going to push into that position, but will it be too late? There's 1 minute 20 left on the clock, and Gaspar needs to pick up two flags. He could easily take this, these two flags here, this one and this one, but it's just about his units actually getting there in time. Panzer Vinicotons picks up another kill. Will it pick up another as well, or will they move out? No, he does pick up another two kills there. That thing has killed so many units. Another PE3 strike coming in. The AA has started to move up, I think. But Jack is now worried. He's using the strikes against infantry. So he's definitely worried at this point. Storm shoots him, pushing him. I think they do have the anti-tank grenades. We'll need to unload right in front of this T-3476. Unload, unload. Oh, they get taken out. They get taken out. That's a big loss. Just trying to see whether there's another Sturm shoots on the field to see whether I could guarantee they did have anti-tank capability on them. Bomber does come in, stress out the central area. This is close. We, we were back to a 12-12. We are at a 12-12. I don't know what was on the clock. I haven't been looking, but 
There's 25 seconds on the clock. Jagger's at 13-11. Wow, this is incredibly to close. Jas Gaspar has picked up this center flag. This one is open for the taking right now. Jack is rushing in infantry. It's 12-12 once again. Where are the flags changing hands? I think in the center area is a, a big part of that as well. If Gaspar can move in there. He can recover the center area. In comes another JU-188. Will he be able to recover the center area? This is tight. It's 12-12. Jack needs a flag, and he needs a flag for about 20 seconds to win this game. Oh, there it is. There's the flag. It's been picked up. Jack, 13-11, 15 seconds on the clock. The Stub 3G desperately moving forwards, trying to pick up the flag, get it back to a 12-12. Less than 10 seconds. I don't think the Stub is going to get there. Jack will win the game. Oh, my. That was a desperately close finish. No, it's 12-12. It's 12-12. Gasper got there, but it's... Oh, Gasper's got the 13-11. Oh, my. This is so tight. But Jack just needs a flag for about a second. He is like a second away from victory. Oh, my days. This flag has got to be this flag, surely. He has a second. that He, he needs... Well, he needs two flags now. No, it's back to a 12-12. Oh, is this one down here was changing hands. We were missing it. It's back to a 12-12. It has to be this flag up here. The infantry are pinned down. Oh my days, what a finish. This is unbelievable. The Stug has made sure the Stroke DP fall back. There's two T34 76ers. Jack has to recover a flag. It has to be this center area. He needs it for a matter of seconds. This is incredible. If Gasper picks up this victory, oh my god, this would have been tight. The, I, uh, the PE3 does come in and stress out those shoots and Jack will push forward, try and pick up the surrender. He should do that. Gasper's desperately pushing forwards, looking for another flag. We're back to a 12-12. Will these T-34 76ers capture that central flag? I think that's the most obvious one. Oh, the stuck has gone down. The stuck has gone down. The flag changes two seconds on the clock. Oh, my days. What a finish. The stuck goes down for the end. Oh, unbelievable. Jack wins it 32 minutes, 14 seconds. What a desperate finish to that game oh that was so close that was so close jack finishes it wow 2700 kills to 3400 losses gasper outrages jack but loses the game and with it jack goes through to the finals to face off against sandor in the steel division two league season two division two playoffs wow what a finish to that game man that was a fantastic finish that was so so tight gasper commiserations to gasper he was so close there if he'd have been able to hang on to a 12 12 for you know and uh, two minutes maybe he would have been able to reinforce and really push forwards and secure himself the victory but he wasn't able to do that unbelievable wow guys hopefully you enjoyed that game if you did hit that like button if you haven't subscribed then remember to subscribe let's have a look at the kills for jack tanko disaniki early on i think probably in the northern side takes down two urzats and two shootson and that north was just so strong from jack from the very start stroke dp takes out three urzats trooping urzats tough start for sturms tough start for sturm and the Beglite Grenadiers go down to the M2A1 as well as the Panzerbuchi 41. M5 takes out two Schutzen. Nice job. And Sapri, wow, taking down a number of units. Good work from them. The Beglite Pioneers went down to the Tanko de Saniki. I'm not sure exactly where that was, but that is a good kill. That is a good kill. And actually, look at the number of kills that Jack's getting here. And he, he under-traded. He's getting a lot of kills that are like 3 to 1 on his infantry. And he under-traded. So we'll have to see where that is. P3. Look at this. Takes out two IG-18s. Another one comes in. Takes out the Marder and the Stug 3G. Those P3 strikes were pretty deadly. Let's have a look at the kills for Gaspar. But Glide Pioneers. We said they were the best in the game. And look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven infantry units. Shoots and picking up the Sapri. Strokey. Two Avtos and an M. 
couple of M2A1s at that. Panzervenic tongues. Oh, these were the stars of the sneaky beaky. Behind enemy lines attacks. Takes down a sniper in the transport. D3476 as well. And the strokey DP. Nice job from Gaspar with the Panzervenic tongues. Man, that nearly. Maybe that. Oh. Wow, just just so exciting. The pack 40 in that central area was a presence from the start. Jack could never nail down its location, was constantly smoking the thing, but it did kill an M5 and three T-34 76s. The shoots in here, one, two, three, four infantry squads, a ZIS-2 M5 and M2A1, the Stug, two T-34s. Wow, the trades, but like Pen Pioneer, one, two, three, four, five infantry units. Oh, this one did not do well, Kellerman. And demote that leader Kellerman lost out only one kill so definitely lost on the points value there wow Panzervenictons again another one I think this might have been the central area takes out an M42 it was that was the one that was holding fire for so long so eventually they did take out that M42 they did also take out two T3476 as and two strokey DPs, more big like grenadier kills. Wow, so much infantry going down on both sides. These big like grens did a fantastic job. Boy, I feel like Jack must have been low on infantry towards the end of that game. The amount that Gaspar's taken out. Wow, and that just shows if he'd have held that 12 12 for maybe two minutes. Like, he would have won the game because it, Jack must have been so low on infantry units by that stage. The number that Gaspar's taken out. Wow, what a fantastic game. Fantastic finish. Unbelievable. And I look forward to the final now. It's going to be Jack versus Sahandor. And that final is going to be unbelievable. Make sure you do not miss it. Hit that subscribe button. Do not miss that final. Wow, thanks very much for watching guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Head into my description as well, check out my socials, come join me on Twitch, we play Steel Division 2 live, uh, I play with all the viewers as well, so come join me, join in, the, in on those games, have a great time. And uh, also check out my Discord, we carry on the discussion in there, lots of people chat about the games and the cast, so offer your analysis and your in interpretation of the game, Whew, I would love to hear from you. What a fantastic game, I am on a high right now. Unbelievable, unbelievable, oh, beautiful, beautiful game, wow, <laughs> wow, I just can't, oh, it's just so good, it was just so good, what a finish, wow, <laughs> thanks very much for watching guys, I am Angry Birds, make sure you do not miss the final.